I don't know what that machine is, and it starts beeping. And this girl's making noise and, and making noise and moving, and it's beeping, and I'm like, oh, I'm about to see somebody die. Like, that was, I'm going to see somebody die. Well, what does Jim Beal do? He walks up, shuts her door. Well, come on, Tim, we're going to keep walking. I'm like, I'm like, Tim did not. What is going on with this? She's fine. She's fine, buddy. I'm thinking, this wants me in the program. This is crazy. There's no one in this room. And, uh, yeah, we we uh, we got through it. I was in the NICU one day. Uh, I, I made a good friend, Dan Lankin, out of this NICU day. This one day, I'm a student. student and I'm with this gruff, old uh, military man, Dan Lankin. And that's he, that's just who he is. He's, he's ex-military, and he's gruff. And, but he's going to save you no matter what. And he has all the skills. <laughs> so now he tells me, Tim, they're going to do an open heart surgery at the bedside in the, in the neonatal ICU. This baby is this big. I go, okay, what, what is our role? Like, this is interesting. He goes, we're actually going to run the ventilator during the surgery because there's no anesthesia machine that will come down and go into this room. What are we doing now? We're going to cut a baby open and fix their heart. I'm like, in front of me? <laughs> he goes, in front of everybody. This is how it works. I'm going to run the machine. You're going to stand there and watch. He literally put a little box there and made me stand on it. That was Dan Lincoln back then. <laughs> because he did not want me moving. He taught me what it was to be a wallflower. I became a wallflower that day as they're doing surgery. And I'm thinking, this is really neat. The ventilator starts alarming. Now there's a problem. Surgery all stops. I'm standing there like, what is going on? Dan starts getting nutty. He's running in a circle and he's trying to get under this sterile field so he can get to this ventilator. But we're not really trained in this kind of thing. So he just improvises and he climbs underneath everything. And you see Dan's little head moving under a blanket. I'm like, what is going on? And I see his hand come out from the blanket and he's got a circuit, a ventilator circuit. It hooks to a breathing tube to a breathing machine. He's got it in his hand and there's a hole in it, a burned hole. And he goes, Tim, hey, do you hear me? And I'm like, yes. He goes, grab me a new circuit. I'm just standing there going, what? First of all, I, I barely know what you're showing me. Like I know what it is, but I don't know like what size it is, what it's called, where to find this thing. But I know something bad is happening, so what do you do? You, you go. So I ran out of the room, I ripped the stuff off, I'm sweating. I actually think I was crying. <laughs> I ran into the supply room and I just ripped open every cover until I saw something that looked familiar. I see the circuits. I was like, I grabbed two because I'm not really sure which one's right, but I run, I gown all the stuff back up and he's in there. He's bagging this child underneath the sterile field and everybody's sweating and quiet, very nerve wracking. I hand it to him. He says, perfect. Oh, I couldn't have felt happier that I did something right. So I get back at my little box because now I'm watching again. I'm just happy to not be involved. Dan fixes it. As he's doing this, there's another baby in the room. There's actually six babies in this room while this surgery is going on. There's a baby behind me. There's nurse yells. I'm extubated over here. What does this, what mean? Does this mean? What does this mean? This